Hi everyone, this is Gail. Welcome today to Overcoming the Obstacles. We're going to be talking to Laurel. She's with the Candy the Wee Service Dog channel right here on YouTube. Uh, she's also a member of our Facebook group. Now, if you haven't joined our Facebook group, I'm going to invite you to do that because we have a fantastic, bodacious, wonderfully supportive community there. I'm going to put that link right here in the description box. Let me grab a drink here. Sorry about that. My, my throat's acting up a little bit. Just to, just to this morning thing. I'm not too worried about that. So I hope everyone's having a great day. And I did mention Facebook. But let me tell you, over there we have a giveaway going on. And that giveaway ends this Saturday, the 25th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. But if you do want to check it out um, and participate in the giveaway, fly right over there because this is a travel-themed giveaway. And we have a travel watch, the leather at band, and a weekly planner because I like to take notes on all of my trips and I thought somebody else might too. So you've got plenty of space to jot some quick notes down in the planner. Uh, we also have a pair of earrings and a couple of other little uh, things that are just kind of a bonus. The big price is the watch and the planner. So head on over there to our Facebook group and join up. You'll see the post over there once you do that that says it's a real simple question for you to answer. If you could spend one hour anywhere, where would it be and why? And when I say you can spend one hour anywhere, it doesn't have to, have to be a place that's real. It can be in another dimension. If you want to go to Middle Earth, whatever you want to do. If you want to go live on Pandora for an hour, just put in uh, what you'd like to do and why to enter. It's really simple. So we've already got a couple of people in here today. I want to thank both of you. Uh, Laurel may be having some live stream challenges. I don't see her. Yeah, she's not quite here yet, but she will be. I'm sure. Sometimes, you know, at the last minute, uh, kids cry, dogs have to be taken for walks and things like that. So you know how that goes. And we have got, let's see, everyone that's in here, we've got two people, which we're, we're glad of. Now, here's what I want you to do. If you have not subscribed yet, go ahead and click that subscribe button to join our channel. And don't forget to share it because that's how we grow. We're always also accepting guests. So if you have a story that you'd like to tell, go ahead and hit me up, email me. I'm going to type this in so you'll have my email address. And just put overcoming the obstacles in the subject line. Because when you put overcoming the obstacles in the subject line, I flag that. So I get it immediately and it goes into a special filter so we don't have to worry about the dreaded spam folder. folder. I can't talk today. So, all right. So while Candy is working on coming in, uh, I want to go ahead and talk to you. We're going to be talking about service dogs today. Now, I have a service dog, and this is my second one. Uh, my first one passed away. So the one that I have now is what they call a successor dog. And that simply means it comes after uh, your first service dog. And his name is Pipsy. He is so cute. But something that people ask me, they'll say things like, you know, do you really need a service dog? Or, you know, it's not obvious that something's wrong with you. So they just automatically assume that you don't. Um, and then oftentimes I'll get up from the table or whatever, and they'll see the leg brace on my leg. Invisible disabilities in people who have service dogs are huge because you don't have to have something that's obvious to have a service dog. And so a lot of people 
will comment on that. And I've spoken to a lot of service dog handlers who have had that issue come up. And so I'm going to show you a couple of clips and videos. So here I am with Pipsy and we're at the doctor's office. Um, I'm actually at the neurologist's office um, right then because I have a couple of things going on, one of which is seizures. The other one is I have problems with COVID fog. Now, I didn't get the dog for COVID fog, but he does help. So how does a dog help with COVID fog? I know you're going to ask that. Um, and he helps by helping me get out of the building if I get turned around and confused, or he'll help me find my car, or he'll go find my husband, things like that. So just a couple of things there. Um, I'm going to do, if you want to hear more about that, I'll do some more information on that a little later. And just let me know. So yeah, I think I see Laurel. Yeah, she's getting ready to come in here. I'm just going to tell her, just Laurel, just wave at me when you're ready to come in. Okay, she's waving. All right, everyone. Ta -da! Here's Laurel. Uh, <clears throat> yes, I'm sorry I'm late. Candy had a last minute potty break. I, yeah, I told everybody, I said, you know, right before the streams, kids scream and dogs have to go out. Well, the thing is, here's the funny thing is, she has um, a constipation problem because she doesn't drink enough water. And I mean, she's been like that all her life. But what happens is she gets gas and she can't tell what's gas and what's really a bowel movement. So I have to take her out there. And it turned out to be gas. Oh, of course. Of but course. she was so demanding. She she was literally yelling at me. You just should just tap me when she wants to go. She was hitting me and, and barking at me like, and looking at me and now like, Mom, I'm going to kill So like, I am I'm so sorry. That's okay. And I, I, I was ready to come on at like quarter chilling. So Candy, I have to shame you in the public. She's, she just want to show her face now. <laughs> Oh, that she may she's be tired. Funny. She may have had such a big adventure that she is just tired. No, nah, she's fine. She's listening. Um, yeah. So, um, were were you ready to uh, have me go ahead and and tell my story yet, or did you yeah. have anything else? See, I'm just. I've got. We've got a quick pick. Okay, um, Gloria, who you may remember, um, yeah. she is watching, but she's having trouble commenting. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Gloria, there's not a lot I can do about that except um, commiserate. Ooh, I can grab my phone. Let me grab okay. my phone so I can see the comments. Okay. Yeah. I grab on my phone so I can see comments too. Yeah. Because I watch the comments on my, I watch the comments on my phone. I just turn it down so that it's, you know, not loud. Yeah. All right. Okay. And I do yeah, have yeah. two screens. So if you see me looking over at this screen some, um, it's because I have our, we're doing this on StreamYard. So I have the StreamYard side on one screen, and then I have the YouTube side on the other screen here. It's just mm -hmm. easier for me to keep it up, keep up with it. Yeah. So that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Well, if I get the phone. Okay. Uh, so. And Gloria, the only thing I can suggest is that maybe try um, rebooting your phone. Yeah. See if that helps. Or I thought, yeah, I thought you should. Come back in. Yeah, sometimes if you shut your phone off and turn it back on, that sometimes makes a difference too. It I can. Thought. It yeah. can. So, yeah. Whatever you think it might work for you, yeah. Okay, so now I'm not, I'm not being, where are we at? Okay. <clears throat> wait, I think oh. I, I think I got the wrong, okay, wait, that, that's the cooking one. I'm oh, looking, my oh, God. No, 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 I, 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 I found the right one. I just want to see any um comments anybody says, because I can't see it when I got the full screen on. I can't see comments on my tablet, but I can see it on my phone okay so i'm i'm all ready so yeah i see what glorious you know i'm gonna take my glasses off of allergies oh, it's been a little while since we've seen you so we're glad you're here yes i'm glad to see gloria's on here yeah it, it, did she get it worked out uh she says she's rebooted okay okay 
Yeah. Um, so you want, you want to go ahead and start then? Yeah. What okay. would you, uh, I'm just going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself. And okay. We'll get started that way. Okay. That's All good right. So, so my name is Laurel. My dog's name is Candy. That's why it's called Candy the Wee Service Dog. And she's got more followers than I do. So she's more popular. But what happened was originally Candy was an ESA. So now they're, you know, that's not a service dog, but they do, you do have to have a medical condition to have an ESA. Your dog has to fill out, that's what you, that's what people get confused. You do have to have a letter when you move into housing that won't let uh, animals in and you want to go into all the common areas with them. Okay. In housing, they group service dogs and ESAs as equal. That's only in housing. So wherever a service dog can go in public housing, the dog, I mean, the ESA. So, for instance, if you've got a, um, say they're going to do a live concert downstairs, Candy, when she was an ESA, could come, even though she wasn't a service dog, because of it's, you know, it was under the HUD. Uh, rules, which, like I said, they, they group ESAs with uh, service dogs only in housing now. Only in housing, right. Yeah, and so we could go in, so they had a dining room, Candy could go in the dining room and when they had parties and food, but um, you have to have a letter for that, and you have to, it has to be, uh, that has to be an actual, uh, either a, a psychiatric condition or a perceived so I get, in other words, the doctor goes like, well, I think you probably do have GAD, which is general anxiety. It doesn't have to be a full diagnosis. It does, okay. They suspect that. So, but, okay. it has, but it has to, it doesn't have to go into you. just say the doctor, you need, you need the dog for um, um, whatever. They, I don't think she, she put GAD. Or maybe she did. I think she did have to put that because it is a privacy thing they do need to know that part but the of course the land the manager is not supposed to share anything they just right. say well she's allowed to have her esa here they, they don't say nothing else but that's that's an esa so candy started out as an esa that again last year long because she started alerting um naturally to my um neuropathy i have neuropathy that's um from my spine it's not I, I don't have diabetes, okay? So you know, you've, um, got, you've got a couple of disabilities, right? Oh, well, yeah, I got, well, actually, let me tell you. I have 24 different disabilities, disorders, slash conditions. And Candy just task for 12 of them. So that's pretty amazing that she does task for half of those uh, conditions. And and she's wow. done it when I've been, been in the doctor's office. She's alerted the doctor when my blood pressure suddenly drops or if it goes up too high or whatever. So, um, yeah, so she started originally alert, um, alerting me to my um, neuropathy in my legs because what it was is some, my legs were just pulled up, either one or both. And she would start to nose bump me or body, take her little body and bump me. And so I started, then that, that's when maybe five minutes later, I started getting stumbling. I almost, I didn't fall, but I almost did. At that time, I was, I think I was using it. No, I had my scooter, but sometimes I was walking, I, I used a cane, but I can still fall with a cane. But anyway, so then I started um, uh, making that into, um, you know, a task. What do you want to call it? Uh, I was conditioning her that I wanted her to do that every time when she sensed that. And I, you know, the, the, the thing about when you're first um, you have a service dog, no matter whether you have the dog is trained by an organization or if you're doing it yourself, sometimes you, you the person fails to pay attention to what the animals do because you think, well, maybe they just they got confused and they're telling you someone, something's not going on. Like, didn't you say that, that Pipsy, you thought, he was alerting you to something and there was nothing and it turned out it was your blood sugar. And we figured out he really was alerting. Yes. 
And so that's what Candy was doing. We went to the zoo one time, and my scooter had broke down, and they didn't have any electric scooters um, available. They were all out. And so I was with my friend. She had um, her service dog, and her dog was a big dog. But anyways, so she was with me, so I said, you know, if I need to, she said she would, you know, lean, let me lean on her. And so we were walking around, and this one particular, uh, I got a little bit ahead of her, and Candy started doing this. She started bumping me on my ankle, and I was distracted by the animals in the zoo. And she goes, I think Candy's alerting you. And I said, oh, and I think she's just excited because we're at the zoo. Sure enough, we go around the corner, and I almost fall in a bush because my leg fell off. I fell out. Oh, no. But I, I caught myself because there's like a little okay. railing there. But see, I should have paid attention to her because she really was alerting me. And this was on a busy weekend, um, uh, Mother's Day. So you can imagine how many people were there. Oh. But she was focused on what she was supposed to be doing. And silly me thought, oh, well, she's, she's just new at this thing. She's, you know, confused or whatever. So. Pay attention to your animal. Once you've gotten trained to do a test, then you have you have to build that trust. I mean, they got to trust you for their need, but you got to trust them too. Right. You have to, you one, have of the, to one of the things they said in Pipsy's class is trust your dog. Yes. And exactly. Like we said I messed up on that because I didn't pay adequate attention to him during the meeting, yeah. and yeah, that was an interesting experience. Yeah. So but how did you decide that you needed to switch Candy over? And how did you decide that she had the capability of becoming a service dog? Because not every service dog can make the cut. Exactly. Well, okay. So the first not reason. Not every service dog makes the cut. So the first reason was um, my, um, for my mental health, but also because of that neuropathy, my doctor really wanted me to start, you, you know, um, you know, uh, shape, that's what I wanted to shape. I was shaping the behavior that she was doing into a task. And so that's why I, my initial reason was she was alerting me to the neuropathy, but she also was um, alerting me while, when I'm sleeping that okay. my, hiatal, my hiatal hernia, she would wake me up because um, I could aspirate on stomach uh, contest when my husband was at home, and, you know, with me when you saw it, he was a light sleeper, so he could hear me. But once he went to a nursing home, um, you know, I I was by myself. I could drown. I mean, I sleep at a forty-five degree angle, but I could still have stomach content. So Candy sure. started doing that. So definitely, the doctor wanted me to start, you know, having her because she was especially afraid at night I'm by myself if I you know if I ask for it I can either drown on the contents or even if you don't drown you can get pneumonia and a lot of times it's fair right. because that makes sense. Yeah because food contents don't belong in your lungs. So you get uh aspiration pneumonia and you can die from that. So can you um the thing is like I said animals are so smart um, the only thing that I did at night, which my husband told me, that's why I know candy goes on. Um, I would sound like I was clearing my throat. I would just go <clears throat> real soft. <clears throat> and so that's what she, she alerts herself. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm okay, candy. Her ears went straight up. She was listening. She heard me doing that sound. Aww. If I just do it once, she doesn't. If I, do it, if I do it two or three so she times. She's supposed to be alerting. Yes. So, anyways, those are the two reasons: the neuropathy um, from you know my spine, which made my legs go numb, and then the um, you know the possibility of aspirating at night. So, those are the two things that we started doing. That um, and at first, I I had a couple of friends, um, and they the one guy he works at Cincinnati Zoo. He's actually their be animal behavior. So, I mean. He does all their behaviors, um, whether it's, um, you know, cats, the donkeys, what he knows all that kind of stuff. He was going to do that with Candy. And then before he even met her, when I said she was a chihuahua, he says, oh, no, I don't want to do it. So 
He said chihuahuas. Well, I mean, chihuahuas, you know, some are not trainable for service-related tasks. But you know what? The some reason are. they're not. The re yeah, I'll tell you a little secret. Chihuahuas get a bad reputation because not be it's not that they're that is not their natural behavior. It is because of the owner. They're so tiny and so cute when a puppy, and you let them form bad habits. Then when they're getting older, you don't want them to do that. It's just like, say, when your kid is two years old and they say, shut up, people might think, oh, that's funny. Well, it's not funny when they're five years old and they're in kindergarten and they tell their teacher to shut up. Do you see what I'm saying? So they yeah, teach. It loses the humor factor real quick. So, so what they're doing with those little dogs, not just chihuahuas, Pomeranians, um, uh, some of the other small, it's because they're so little, tiny, cute, they let them get away with stuff. So you have to start um, right away with them. That, and the other thing about chihuahuas, I, I, I've had from a, but the thing is, they are very intelligent and they mature faster. So when, by the time they're six months old, if you haven't got good foundation of of good behavior, you're going to have a long, that's why they tell you, um, really, I had, uh, mom, the lady that had a uh, kid trained her, she had a potty trained um, at nine weeks old. Now, that sounds kind of fast, but they can learn that young. If you wait till they're four, five, six months old, then they, they, they just will go anywhere because they, they, they're, they're smart. You need to start young with the, the little smaller breeds. The bigger ones, I'm, I'm not having experience on them, but the yeah. little ones, yeah. So anyways. With, with um, we, we owner trained Tomlin, which was my first service dog. Right. And his training began in the car on the way home, getting yes. him used to his name, yeah, exactly. and then getting him used to the kennel and going out and so forth. Yeah. Oh, and that's the other thing, uh, Gail. I have, um, there, you know, nerve damage in my hand, so I'm always dropping things. So she got used to you know, not getting um, scared if I dropped a pot or pen. I mean, she would come and look, but she didn't. She wasn't. She wasn't, she wasn't in panic if she didn't make noise. And I have to tell you, I think I've told you this before, but one day I was making spaghetti sauce. I was trying to make a big batch so I wouldn't have to um, what you call it, gravy. Um, <laughs> I'll, I'll, it's, it's, so anyway, I had big pockets of the stuff and my counter in the stove, so I just slid. I didn't have to pick it up, but my hands went wacko and the salt, I, it, I always let it cool off. So it was, it was cool, but it went everywhere on the stove, the counter, me, the floor and everywhere. And I always say to Candace, said, clean up in all night because she'll come and pick up a little thing on the floor and when it, as she came, and there was like, I have to tell you that the puddle was probably about a three, two and a half, three feet diameter of sauce on the wow. floor. And the expression Candy had was, she looked at me and then she looked at the floor. She looked at me again and then she looked at the floor and she walked away. She like, it was looked like, lady, you got to be kidding me. And you expect me to eat all that off the floor. But yeah, so she helps. Um, she has, like I said, with the nerve problem, uh, and then she started with the uh, high yield hernia, and then she started later on alerting to my blood pressure dropping or, or what, and it's happened in the doctor's office. Like they'll do, they'll do the vitals in the beginning. I'm usually in there about an hour, an hour and a half, and within that time, sometimes it, it can change. And my doctor was so impressed how Candy knew even before the doctor did. So that's pretty amazing that she didn't pick up on that my blood pressure was going up or down. And yeah, so. Um, and speaking of candy, I have a photo of the three of us. We are outside oh, of the yes. restaurant. And candy did not attempt to eat any of the restaurant food or wine or bar yes. or complain. But there she is. <laughs> That's actually the three of us. I'll zoom yeah. in on it a little bit more. Um, with the star of the show right here. Yes. The Marvel only thing that the only and thing that was tempting to her. Yeah. The only thing that was tempting to her was that 
darn waiter. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you all, we did have a waiter that was really, really over the top with yeah. trying to pet candy. No matter how many times Laurel said, well, you can't really pet a service dog. You know, you're not supposed to distract the service dog. Yeah. It, what? He was like, oh, yeah, I know, but she's so cute. Yeah. And then every time he came by, he would tap her on the head or wave at her or, or what? Yeah, yeah, I remember the waving definitely. Yeah. 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 It was but, constant. Um, but yeah, um, her temperament was always, she's got the type of personality that she aims to please. And then the other thing is, um, depending on the breed, like I know some people that their dog are, are um, motivated by toys when you're teaching them things. Candy, I mean, she likes treats, don't get me wrong, but she's more motivated by praise and, uh, and affection. So if you scratch her back or rub her belly or say, oh, good girl. She likes that more than if I gave her a dozen treats. Because there's times where um, I'm trying to show people what she can do and I'll give her treats. She doesn't want the treats. She gets up on my lap and wants me to hug her. And they say, oh, that's cute. She's hugging us. And yeah, that's her reward. She gets up and leaves the treat on the floor. So yeah, so you, you get the you really have to know your breed. So that's one of the things that you're going to get. Um, if you're going to train your own service dog, well, even if you're going to get one like you did from a program, you need to know what you're getting into, what breed. And like you said, why do you want that? Why do you want a Chihuahua rather than a Great Dane or a Rice? You need to figure out what your needs are. Also, depending on you. Now, see, I've had bad experiences when I was a kid. There was a group of uh, large dogs that were running the neighborhood, and I was coming home from school one day, and they came after me. The only thing that really kept me safe was um, I ran up these church stairs, and they had, you know, those old heavy push rooms with the long handle, and I used that to keep them away. And thank goodness somebody called the police, because back then, you know, they didn't have 911. And so the police came, and... Um, I don't remember what they did. They did something to scare the dogs. And so they scared them. They scared them into this corner. And then I guess uh, the, the, you know, the animal control people came to you. And, but that was scary. So, and I, and I, and I, like, I went all the way from Cincinnati all the way up to Toledo, which is like a four and a half hour drive in a car with, um, with, uh, she had, um, look, what was Tomlin now? Uh, Tomlin was a husky mix. Yeah, okay. Well, that's what this dog. This was a pure husky. 75 husky and about about 20% golden retriever. Yeah, yeah. well, he, the, the husky was sitting on my left side and Candy was on my right side. And um, so we went all the way up to Colum I mean, to Toledo and the Toledo Zoo and back. And um, yeah, he, he was a sweet dog. But like I said, uh, for my own self, I don't want a big dog because I just, yeah, you know, every once in a while, I just that fear kind of thing. So little dog, well, and big I, dogs are not for everybody, and neither are small dogs. Right, there's people, there's, 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 there's people. I want to let people know too that any breed of dog can be a service dog. It's the training that makes exactly. the dog a service That's dog, right. not the breed. Well, that's what I was trying to say about uh, the Chihuahuas. They actually, when they looked at the, the for psychiatric needs or um, like the blood sugar thing, they found out the little dogs can um, actually alert a little bit faster than the bigger breeds because they can get right up in your face more than when Pipsy, he's got to climb on you like, you know, because he's so big, but Candy can just fly up there and smell my breath or whatever. I don't have blood sugar problem, but I have friends that have uh, little dogs for that purpose, or they're, um, uh, what is the other thing? Sometimes they'll oh, put the, the little dogs in a special carrier, so as yeah. they go through the store and stuff, they're just, they're just right, right, right there. Yeah. Now, with me, um, Pipsy is a lab retriever, and he's smaller, so if he thinks I'm, a, I'm having blood sugar issues, he starts right. crawling at me, and if you guys, I have over on my other channel a video where he is 
physically tugging on my clothes and he is like, your blood sugar is crazy. So fix it, fix it now. We are yeah. going to do it now. Um, yeah. But otherwise I'll lean down to him and I'll say, check me and I'll just blow in his face. If I think yeah. I'm having an issue and yeah. he's been, he, there's a range, but it's, if it gets low to a certain point or high to a certain point, that's when he alerts it. And for that range, he's as accurate as my meter. It's really impressive. Oh, uh, now, did you say he also helped with your asthma or was I wrong on that? He'll one? go and he'll get my inhaler and but I mean, does, he sense, does he sense that you're having breathing problems or no? Um, not yet. But Tomlin, my previous service yeah. dog, he did. And I okay. think it's because he could hear the wheezing before. Yeah. And so he was really, really good at waking me up, which helped keep the asthma attack yeah. from progressing. Yes. And I could go ahead and use my inhaler. I've been guilty a few times of being just starting an asthma attack. And with me, my lung functioning goes down. So I don't really realize it's yeah. lung functioning. I'm just really yeah. tired. And it's kind of a gradual thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I've woken up in the middle of the night um, with my lungs just making this horrible sound. Oh, yeah. And I have dreamed that I was in a flock of Canadian geese. And it was just because my lung was, when I would breathe in, oh, it would make this yeah. really kind of um, almost honking sound. And so Tomlin would be right there headbutting me. And that's how I put it together that he was... He knew what was going on. Yeah. The first couple of times he headbutted me to wake me up and I did the normal average thing, which was to tell him to go back and lay down. Yeah. It was not playtime at four in the morning. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Another thing that, that she, um, now this didn't happen until after I had had her a couple of years because I had never had the problem before, but I have um, uh, vertigo. It's caused from the, there's different causes. There's lots of people have different causes, but mine's from the crystals in the inner ear have gotten dislodged in one of the ears. And so um, what happens is when my allergies flare up, I get a little bit of fluid. I don't get no ear infection, but I get some fluid and it throws your balance off. And then what happens is then they think this uh, vertigo is just getting dizzy. No, the whole room well, is a little dizzy. bit more than that. Yeah, no, the ceiling is on the floor. The wall is on the ceiling. I mean, you, and what happens is because you get so dizzy, your brain can't figure up, are, figure, are you standing on the floor? Are you hanging upside down? And so you get so dizzy, and then you end up throwing up. Well, she started alerting to my vertigo because I didn't know how I asked the because uh, the, the funny thing is, to get diagnosed with um, vertigo, you actually go to an ENT, an ear, nose, and throat doctor, and they do this test. You lay it flat on your back, and they have your head slightly hanging off. I'm not going to do it because I'll myself. But when you have your head hanging off the table just a little bit, and then they turn your head, and whatever way you're, they turn your head, that particular eye will like go down or up, it, 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 it'll move up different than the other eye. So one eye is moving up and the other one's moving. And so they figure out, so that's why I know it's my left side because that's my eye that does that. And so I think what, what Candy does is she gets up in my face and she'll be like looking at my eyes and then she'll be tapping me. And then I realize, oh yeah, well, I'm getting dizzy. Yeah, thank you, Candy. And I can take something for, you know, before it gets out of hand. So she recognizes when my eye is starting to, uh, like I said, it's going, it's either turning out or going down or doing whatever it does. But I asked the ENT, I said, how does she, he said, he's pop, she's recognizing that your eye movement is, is moving. Yeah. And so, yeah, they, 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 they can be trained to a lot of things, but like I said, you need to know the, the breed that you need. Why, why do you need that breed? um the characteristics like they they talk about there's working region but really all dogs have a job or need a job i mean even if it's just like you know being emotional support but they all do some kind of job like 
originally chihuahuas were, they were the first um, ratters. Before they ever had rat terriers, chihuahuas were known for going down and chasing out the, the rats or the weasels because unfortunately this was done in Mexico where the Incas, the uh, Aztecs and all the diff and different right. Now some of the Aztecs actually wanted the chihuahuas for dinner. You know, like the Cornish hands, that, that, that's what they would right. do, the little chihuahuas. But the Incas actually had them, they treat them more like a, like a god kind of symbol. Oh, and then the, yeah, but the Mayans are the ones that wanted them to go in there because they actually wanted those weasels and the uh, rats and most because they wanted to, you know, because you know, in Asia they eat rats, they wanted to eat the rats, and so they sent the dog down in there to get the rats, but they didn't want it to be killed because then you know they just contaminated it. So the chihuahuas would bite them on the neck. And so, of course, the rat's going to squeak as they're dragging it out. And so that's why little dogs like the squeaker toys. People go like, why do we get such? Because it mimics their natural ability. They, yeah, well, that's yeah, yeah. 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 We even tell that about Tomlin. And she, you know, and she, most of her toys are bigger than her because you, you've seen um, the ferrets, how big they get. They're, they're pretty long. They can get two or three feet long. So they're bigger than Candy. So that's why she loves big dogs. Oh, so how so big cool. is Candy? How much does she weigh? Um, why not? She's a little bit older, so they allow her to be a little more. I think she said she was almost eight pounds, like seven and three, four. Wow. Originally, she was, uh, for many years, she was six, six and a half pounds. But she's 10 years old. She said she still got her hourglass figure. So when you look over the dog, you see uh, their ribs. And well, so then they, they, but they do, they say, you, you want to see the ribs and then they go in a little bit and then back out, they want the hips kind of thick. So, you know, for the, so she doesn't have any bone problem. So she still got her hourglass figure. So she said, like I said, when we did that excessive uh, blood work, she was, I was really, um, Usually the doc, the vet will just call and say, oh, yeah, here's your blood work, blah, blah, blah. She talked a good 10 minutes about how she was so pleased um, that I knew how to, um, you know, make candy, homemade food, because there's some people that say, oh, I'm going to make my dog food, and then they really don't, again, they don't do their don't homework. Do research. Yes, to know what, the, like, there's a formula, like most because uh, I belong to a couple of uh, uh, groups on Facebook and we share recipes. But the main thing is, it's between uh, 65 and 70 percent. Um, you want that to be meat. And then you got like 5 to 10 percent other proteins like peanut butter, cottage cheese, yogurt, cream cheese, eggs, you know, that kind of proteins. And then they have fruits and vegetables, too. And so, yeah, we, we, we change recipe. And uh, once I, I do buy her a couple of commercial uh, uh, treats, but I, I really make sure that they don't have anything on recalls. But did you know they have a sandwich cookie? I can't think who makes that. I'll have to um, share that the next time. It. I don't remember now. now it, you, you can get it at... Um, you can get it at PetSmart. Um, I think Walmart has them. I think Kroger's. I know Myers has them, and they actually are. Um, they have the they have what's well, not chocolate, it's carob, but they call them chocolate cookies, and then they the chocolate uh, sandwich cookies, and then they have the vanilla. It's not real chocolate. No, it's carob. It's a carob plant. Yeah, um, and then they have chocolate chip, but they're they're uh. Products. I don't see it. Okay. Well, I'll find it. But the th here's the thing is, to, um, yeah, because I even call them, but I think it says it on the packet too. Um, it's human grade uh, ingredients. In other words, when you say human, it, it, it's the higher end, like um, the lower, um, the, the stuff that's 
Lord, that's what they give to the zoo and, and make the dog food companies and all that. So this is a really good quality little cookie and uh, Candy loves them. And I'll break um, you know, in half because it's kind of, uh, I guess it's the size of an Oreo. So I'll break it in half and give it to her. And she's just like a little kid, Gail. She'll eat the, the icing in the middle and then she eats the cookie. <laughs> That's the way you're supposed to do it. Well, I know that's what I mean, said. You know how it's done, right? That's the way you're supposed to eat your cookies. But yes, I will share that the next time that um with that. But yeah, um, like I said, I, I like when they have, you know, when it says, you know, what the ingredients are, and they don't have all these other words that you can't pronounce, and it's just really good quality. Now they're not cheap, though. I'm gonna tell you that. I think I paid. Well, I think you think about the good stuff get, is never cheap. Well, I think you get 24 cookies to get you get two rows of 12 uh, for eight dollars, and you wouldn't be giving them to 50 all the time. Those would just be like That's one, right. like one cookie a day or something. Yeah. Can I tell you what happened with Pipsy? No. Yeah, you know, everybody keeps saying you know you can keep a dog busy by getting one of those Kongs, which Kongs are wonderful. Just saying. Yeah. And then put peanut butter in it. Yeah. Well, dogs have food allergies. Oh, he's allergic, allergic to peanut, peanut butter? butter. He's allergic oh. to peanut butter of all things. Is like, it I have the only lab on the planet with a sensitive stomach. I keep saying this. Oh, there's a stomach. Well, no, I had a friend. Her dog was allergic to peanut butter, but it was the contact. His eyes would start to swell up. Um, I had a little girl at my preschool. Her eyes swelled up so bad. They started um, bulging out. They had to call the life squad. Um, but Dogs can have the contact kind too, where their eyes get all puffy and swell. So I'm glad it's not contact; it's the digestion. Yeah. Well, yeah. he started. Um, he started itching all over, and I was like, "Why?" Oh, bless his heart. We went to the vet, and she's like, "Oh, we may have to send you to a veterinary dermatologist," which I didn't even know existed. Yes. But yeah, yeah, they got everything. And we were like, okay, pro I'm going to, I was like, before we do this, I'm going to do process of elimination. And the first thing that I eliminated was the peanut butter because he was getting it every, every few nights. Yeah. And then we noticed immediately that it, that helped clear them up. So, yeah. so I'm assuming that if you're making your own food for your dog, you're probably having to watch out for stuff like that too. Yeah. And then again, if you're making it and you know your dog has a, you know what's going into that mixture, yeah. Um, originally, like, she ate dog food when I first got her. Um, she, she was eating a, a really expensive dry one. Then she got cut that, you know, she was, she had finished losing her teeth, so she didn't want that anymore. Um, so then I got her the semi-moist. I tell you, we tried so many dog foods, and then the doctor said, well, why, and her vet would say, well, why don't you add a little bit of people food on top of the dog food? Well, it got to be where it was mostly human food and hardly any of the dog food. She said, okay. so, I said, so that's when I said, well, why don't we just go ahead and, and go ahead and, and make all, the other thing that's good for her, that because she's eating homemade, she doesn't, she's, there are dogs that don't like to drink a whole lot of water, and it happens in every breed. Um, my vet happened to have a Chihuahua, and she had, um, I think she had a Labrador. No, I think she had a Golden, it was a Golden, I'm sorry. She had a Golden right. and, and a Chihuahua. Now, now listen to this. Candy doesn't like to drink much water. Well, her, her Chihuahua is the opposite. It will guzzle water till the cow... Now the, yep, the, the mine will do that, but it's a lab. But but, but the golden wouldn't drink water, so that's why oh, she yeah. said. So she started making homemade broth and adding it, and so that's what I do with candy. Is I water, um, I soup it up, and so she's getting. I know how much water she's getting a day. So like, if I put, uh, you know, because um, she's small, I put like eight tablespoons of water. And each meal that adds up to about a half a cup of water. So we know she's getting at least a half a cup of water a day, which what if you equal that to Pipsy, 
That would probably be like a bowl of water a day for you. Oh, we'll never be able to track Pipsy's fluid intake if we have to, just simply yeah. because he gets it everywhere. Yeah. You know, and one of the things about having a Labrador retriever, if anybody's ever thinking about getting a lab, is Pipsy thinks that the water bowl exists for two purposes. One of the purposes is to provide water for his ingestion. The other purpose is to use it as a miniature swimming pool. But remember, I didn't know what to say for today. But, but, but remember about the breed now, Labs and Goldens both love water. So yes, there you go. Have you ever went swimming? Oh, yeah. I've been swimming a lot of times. No, I said Pipsy has he went swimming. Oh, has, other than in his water bowl, no, not yet. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna say because he's still young. Yeah. But yeah, he's gonna love when you take him swimming. Yeah. Well, we'll see. Didn't you used to take Tom on swimming? Not intentionally. Oh. Tom I mean, Tomlin, I mean, when, when, Tomlin did he was the funniest thing because he really didn't like water that well we thought um basically where he was exposed to the water was like mountain creeks where the water is running um, yeah. now he definitely did not like the beach and i have a funny story about that but i'll share that another day okay but not, just yeah. he did not like the beach but one day we were out at the lake you know nice and calm yeah. and he goes up to the water edge and he backs up and he goes up and he backs up and we continue walking yeah. Well, the lake had the ducks in it. So it, with huskies, they have this super strong prey drive. And he yeah. had a little bit of golden retriever in him to help him overcome that. But yeah. there were still these moments. And so he saw the duck go by and he took off after the duck and he got part way out and he realized, oh, yeah, I don't like water. <laughs> and, <laughs> he around and he came right on back. But it was a few tense moments before we got him to come back. Yeah. He really wanted to meet that duck live and up close. Yeah. Yeah. That the, is duck, funny. the duck was, let me just toss out here that the duck indeed was fine. The two never met. <laughs> oh, but yeah, so you do, like I said, you, it, when you're doing, before you get the dog, make sure you know what tasks they need to do for you, what breed you're comfortable having and, and knowledge of, and then um, make sure you have um, a respectable uh, breeder that you're getting them from. Yeah, so I know a lot of people say, oh, I don't, don't, uh, oh, what's it, what, what's it, what, what, what do they say? Oh, adopt, don't shop. And I said, well, you know what? When you need a service dog, I'm sorry. You do need to shop because, yes, there are times where you can get a, a rescue dog and they turn out to be a wonderful service dog. But too often they have um, either been inbred or they've got um, behavior problems or they have health problems because they weren't taken care of. Right? So you need a dog that's going to be optimum health so candy is a rehomed dog and that's not the same as a rescue right. candy was candy was um taken care of and um there's a, a vet that's not all oh, about i don't have to wait from us um but anyways they have a program where they um they do that they they take um litters of dogs you know like these Oops, thing like you know, the people act like their dogs breeding and they got all these puppies. And so they take the puppies when they're weaned from the mother and they'll um, put them in foster homes. So that's what Candy was in. She did not grow up in a, in a uh, you know, a sterile, in, uh, you know, you know, kennel or nothing like that. Right. She was in, she got to go to a, um, live on a farm. So she loves oh, nice. all that. And they had um they had one older um and actually this horse was a rescue. It was it's um it was a Clydesdale, it was a rescue. Clydesdale rescue. It was getting old and oh, wow. couldn't couldn't do all the things that 
you know, they like to see in the shows anymore. So they adopted it on the farm. So Candy Life, so um, our church has a picnic every year, and they have a Clydesdale that, that pulls a, I think they got a couple, two or three of them. Anyways, they pull this wag. Well, it's actually like a, it looks like a, a cable car. But anyways, it, the, the horses pull that. But she loves the Clydesdale horses. And so I asked the, the uh, guy that had the horses, I said, they're not scared of little dogs, are they? And they said, oh, no. And uh, so Candy, it goes up to them, and they look at her, and they just like, oh, okay, that's the little rat. <laughs> they just, but Aww. she, she's drawn to those because she likes all that hair on their their hooves. You know, they oh, got that. Funny. Yeah, so she she loves horses, cats, dogs, chickens, rabbits. I had a friend where I used to live. Um, she had uh, one of the big, huge rabbits. Oh, uh, what do they call them? It had a big flop ear. But that uh, that thing was bigger than, can, that thing was like 25 pounds. It was pure snow white. Not, you know, was, and she had some, like, it was a little, what do they call them? I think they call them kittens, I think. The rabbits are called, yeah. Kit, a kit. Yeah, so it was a kitten. Okay. okay. So she raised it because um, she, she trained it to go, they can be trained to go in cat litter. But she wanted right. she didn't want she didn't want that chalky kind. So she got the kind of cat litter that looks like little paper pellets. And so he would go potty in there. But we would go up to her apartment and candy and this rabbit would play. He had a beach ball. He had a soccer ball. And they would bat the ball around to each other. And then they would chase each other. Candy would chase him and then oh. she'd stop. And then he would chase her, and then they would lay down when they tried. They would lay down the next to each other. But she loved that rabbit, and uh, she called me up. I think, yeah, it's been almost two years that he passed away. I'm so sad. She had him for nine years. She lived nine years. That's a long time. But he's a special one. They, I don't know what they call that kind of. You know, it was a big, huge flop of ears. Like, I mean, this thing is... Like a lop-eared rabbit? Yes, a lop -eared. Yes, yeah, something, yeah. But, but he was snow white. But, yeah, so That's she... Adorable so, playing together, too. Yeah. So, in Candy's case, because she was raised by a foster parent, they knew what she liked, what she didn't like. You know, and that's why I said, when we were talking on the phone, that's I wasn't sure if I wanted to you know, a doctor, um, and so she was telling me, I said, what kind of things to kids? And then she went, she told me that she loves toys, and then the, the, the clincher was, because my other dog uh, didn't mind wearing clothes. She said, oh, she, she doesn't mind wearing clothes. She said, I dress her up for all the holidays, and then I, um, in the winter, she wears PJs and stuff, and I said, oh, oh that, that's, and so I've never had a problem putting on I'll have to do a video where I, I just, I hold her snow thing and it's got four legs. So I hold it like this and she sticks her head in and she puts one paw in and then the other. And then I put it in the back and then she puts other things. But she doesn't. I'm just holding it. She dresses herself basically. And that's Aww. smart. The same thing when I'm taking it off. I'll take off the back legs and then I fold it up and then she'll pull backwards out of it. I'm holding the suit, so then she just backed out of it. So yeah, she just and she doesn't mind the shoes. She's not a, a fan of them, but she doesn't find them. So yeah, so um and like Pacer, it, doesn't, and, Pacer doesn't fight them much either. He just eats them. Oh no. Well, but he's still young, yeah. Yes, he is. How old is he now? Uh Gail? he is I have to stop and think he was 13 months when we got him. And he is, this is February, so we got him in June. Like August. So about 18 months. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, well, and then he probably, don't they even care about the amount of two years of age? Actually, I was just told yesterday that it can be a little older. Yeah, uh, well, that's, a, but I mean, that's the earliest that they mature, the two. 
Yeah, I know. Two to two and a half years, yeah. And Goldens are famous for going over that. The two and a half with the potty training. Oh, yeah. My friend said, man, that, that the potty. She said that dog was so great on everything but the potty training. So that's why they couldn't uh, take her out and do public, you know, access public. until that dog got the potty thing down. It had the task down beautifully. All its behaviors were wonderful. Sit down. I mean, you could walk clear down another aisle and that dog would not move. But the potty thing was a couple times it was having. They went to, to uh, you know, uh, pet friendly. Like they went to, uh, what is it, that tractor place? You know, tractor where they store. live. Yes. And so, they just, store. and so what's nice is they had, they said, oh, don't worry about it. We got paper towels in the spring. They clean it up because, you know, uh, the dog would, in the girl, she would, you know, and they, they I would couldn't always catch die it. if that ever happened to me. Like right yeah. there on the spot, I'm going to meet Jesus. He is going to take me right then. Yeah. And my heart will stop. Well, I mean, I'm still training, but they knew, they knew that they, the dog was in training. But, um, yeah, that, that, that dog took almost two and a half. Um, I think I'm going to say he was. Her name was Daphne. Daphne took two and a half years to get the potty thing done. But then once she got it, she got it. That surprised me, though, with a golden retriever. Uh, but, you know, not, we talked before, not every golden, not every dog makes it. You're Usually, right, yeah. Way before well, I mean, she, yeah, she's a yeah. service, she is a service dog now, but it took, but they couldn't put her on and work, have her work until she got that pot. She was, being a service dog at home, but she couldn't do the public access until she was two and a half because she had to get that party thing done. Now she's everybody here who's listening who does, may not understand what a public access test is. And that's a, yeah. test, that's a test that all service dogs should take. And if you get your dog from an agency, from a program, you better believe they're going to take it. Uh, mm -hmm. And that tests the dog's responsiveness in public buildings just to ensure that everybody stays safe. Because if your dog's tail accidentally gets stepped on, you want to make sure your dog does not respond aggressively. And so passing this, among other things, and so passing this public access test is actually pretty difficult for the dogs. But it's something that is required by agencies, but all service animals should take a public access test yeah. before going out on the field. See, and I had a friend that helped me with that because she was a, she was an animal behavior, so she helped me with, with Candy. But um, with Candy, I, I, I wanted to make sure because she's little and, you know, little dogs can move fast. So, um, you know, I would... Uh, not hard, but I'm just gently pulling her down because I did have a kid come up and uh, grab her tail. Um, she came, you know, how fast little three year old came up, and the parent, I'm telling the parent, your kid, get the kid, it's pulling candy by her tail, thinking that was funny. And all the candy, they're not robots. Here's, here's the thing, like you were saying, they can't be aggressive, but they do not expect the dog to ignore it. I mean, they're not going to just sit there. Oh, yeah, oh, you're yeah. Like she the did dog look. is definitely going to pay attention. You just don't want the dog to respond to Right. So Can Candy saw the little girl pulling her tail, but she looked at me. So she was like, Mom, can you get this girl? So, yeah. So she oh. does that, yeah. And then I, I told you that one time I was in the grocery store, and Candy's on my lap because sometimes – uh, this this store has real narrow aisles, so I had her on my lap, and this lady comes from behind me and grabs candy out of my arms. Oh, no, 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 and me shaking, yeah, and shaking yeah. her like she was a rag doll, and Candy's looking at me like, oh Lord. And I said, <laughs> my dog, man. I said, the thing is, she didn't even know that dog. She didn't know that candy right. could have been an aggressive dog. You don't just come pick up a strange dog and shake the dick. Yeah, there is an etiquette, and we probably need to do an, a one um, interview yeah. and talk about service dog etiquette sometimes. And we, uh, I had somebody at a restaurant try to feed Pipsy. <clears throat> did, did what? 
I, I had a server at a restaurant try to feed Pepsi. Yeah, so we, we might oh, want to talk about that. But um, I just have a couple of minutes here left because uh, yeah. I'm trying to keep it to an hour. What right. is the what is the takeaway that you want people to remember from from hearing you today? Well, that's what I said. First of all, do your homework of what your needs are. So what do you need a service dog for? And talk to your doctor, whoever takes care of most of your conditions. Then you want to talk to um, if talk to friends, talk to um, veterinarians and ask what breeds are good for you know the tasks that you need. And then have two or three choices. Like you might say, well, a lab, a golden, and maybe a, a, a beagle or whatever. And so then you need to study extensively on those breeds and how good they are doing that particular task. So know, know your needs, know uh, what breed that's going to probably work for you. And then my thing is, and don't if you want to take somebody with you when you're going to, to get a prospect, don't take a trainer. A trainer knows how to train. They do not know behavior. Now, I'm going to tell you right now, they do that little test to see, um, you know, to see uh, their temperament. Well, I'm telling you, when they're eight or 10 weeks old, you cannot tell them what their permanent temperament is going to be. Because I had two dogs. For sure, but you can get an I It gives you in. Well, I'm going to tell you right now. I've had, I've had friends that had to uh, find rehome their dog because they, they, their personality changed. But I adopted two chihuahuas. And these people, well, I knew well. They were breeders and they were groomers. They knew. Um, and so I got these two little girls. They, they were sweet as could be. And then when they turned um, 12 weeks old, the one dog, we, we, we would go off to work. And when we'd come home, the bigger one, not the little one, the bigger one had little scratches and it looked like bite marks. Well, here the little one was beating up the other dog. They would sleep together, but um, Cinnamon, that's the one we kept. She loved to play. The other one was lazy and just wanted to sleep and eat and, and cuddle with the dog at night. But when Cinnamon wanted to play, she was aggressive. And so we rehomed her to my daughter-in-law's uh, cousin. And the dog lived to she was about 20, but she could not be around other dogs. She did not like other dogs. But she was beautiful. She was so sweet when we got her. And like I said, between that eight weeks old that we got her and that uh, four weeks later, she was a mean little demon. And we did the test like that. Uh, but yeah, you, that, that test is just like, that's why they call them a prospect because you don't know what the final outcome is going to be. So that, that, I will tell you before you leave, um, at, when you go to a breeder, ask them if the dog is a fail, would they take them back? Because respectable breeders would rather take them back and find them a new home rather than you just drop them off at the pound or give them away to somebody. Okay. If, they're, if they're a really true compassionate breed. So um, then I you're not gonna, that. that's good to know. Yeah. No, you're not going to get your money back, but at least you won't have to worry about trying to figure out what am I going to do with this dog? I, I'm not going to be able to keep because I got to go get a, another one. So yeah, you, you want to ask that because I, I never thought of that, but I got, like I said, I've got friends that are, um, you know, they, 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 they're in my, um, what do you call? We have a um, it's uh, we it's a service dog group, and 
before COVID, we used to go on field trips. That's why we went all the way up to Columbus. And we, they'd come down here. But they were all over Ohio. We would go different events together, all these dogs. There's about 15 of us in the, the group. But um, four of them were um, dog uh, behaviors, and two of them were uh, trainers. And so they all knew about those kind of things happening. So they knew about, you know, what, what you should look in a true uh, breeder. If you're, if you're gonna go to a breeder, um, I'm sure with your organization, they already have reliable breeders so they don't have to worry. But if they you want to breed it yourself, make sure you have some, uh, they have a good reputation, yeah. And we can talk about training yourself, you know, training your dog yourself, you know, next time. Yes. yes. It's called owner training. And for those yes. who are listening, yes, it does exist. You can okay. train your own dog per the yes. age. So, all right. Thank you so much, Laurel, for coming in. I appreciate yes. giving I'm you sorry I was late. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Give her a hug for us. Yeah. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Make sure you share this replay and do give us a like, please, because that helps us out a great deal yeah. with the YouTube algorithms. Yeah. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all next time. Bye. It, Candy likes your voice, Gail. <laughs> Aww. That's awesome. All right. Okay, bye, you all. Bye.